Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, I am here um, collaborating with the awesome Radio Works World, and I'm broadcasting from Scotland today. My name is Jennifer Hardy, for those who do not know me, uh, and I'm absolutely blessed to have the opportunity to have this incredible show, The Unstoppable Show. Uh, the Unstoppable Show is where I welcome, I introduce, um, I get to interview some of the most inspiring female entrepreneurs, businesswomen, and creatives. Um, I want to just say a huge welcome to my guest today, Patricia Ramirez. Hello, Patricia. Hi. Hi, everyone. How are you it's today? Great to be here. I'm really good, thank you. It's a little bit ominous here in Scotland with a storm brewing and a yellow sky, but otherwise, fantastic. <laughs> exactly. The same here is very, very strange. It's, it's just looming, isn't it? You can feel the storm coming in. Yes, yes. So strange. So tell me, uh, Patricia, a little bit about yourself, if that's okay. Where did you begin your journey? And um, I should just say before we start as well that Patricia's a fine artist and photographer, among lots of other things. But I'm sure. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I'll let her tell you a little bit about that. But yeah, how did your journey begin? Where where did you live before? What was your um, upbringing like as a child? All those kind of things. What, what was it like? I had a very interesting youth because I was born in Canada, but my parents were actually Dutch. They emigrated there in the 50s, trying to get away after the war and all that. And we did a lot of moving around. Um, so it was a very interesting youth. Um, Canada was very short lived because my father's first job took us back to Britain. And then after that, the Netherlands. So I've been moving around a lot in my life. And uh, that's definitely been part of who I've become. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So I started taking photographs actually at the age of seven. And I think that was partially to document all the changes and everything that was going on in my life. Oh wow, so you had your, your own camera and you used, you used to take yourself away and photograph yeah. things that interest you. Yeah. And what, what yeah. kind of things did you feel the most attracted to then with your photography when you were so young? It's really interesting because I, I recently started documenting everything digitally, obviously it was all filmed back then, and a lot of the shots I took were actually of my family life. Um, and interestingly, really kind of capturing what was really going on. When I look at them now, it's very different to what I had then. And yeah. loads of animals. I've always loved animals. So the <laughs> local sheep and horses and, and our dog and cat were all documented as well. Fantastic. And holidays. Fantastic. Holidays. Yeah. Holidays. So tell me, when did you know or when did you think, you know, this is definitely what you're going to do? Um, and what made the change between photography and fine art as well because they're two very different mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. so what, what was it was it uh, um, something that you had seen or were you inspired by someone or I, I, yeah, I think very early on we, we had quite a good um, upbringing in the Netherlands with art and very young as soon as I was allowed in I was in the darkroom at 13 I uh, was also entrepreneurial, not just an artist, because I'd actually sell pictures. I'd take pictures at school events and sell them. I was a very young, 13. And um, I think just seeing that that was a possibility, I really wanted to go to art school. I had a very domineering father who wanted me to do other things that he felt were safer, a story that lots of women have. Uh, so you know, he wanted me at secretarial school and that kind of thing. And I, I ended up leaving the country and going halfway across the world to follow my own passion uh, wow. and kind of get, get loose from that. And what, what age were you then? Um, 19 and a half, about 20. And I you went on your own? Yes, yeah. I went off to Canada. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the reason was, the excuse was to go back to my roots, to the place I was born. So that was a good excuse. <laughs> Tell me when you were yeah. over in Canada, what, what happened over there? Remember that I, um, I ended up actually following my father's dream for the first year because the story was, you know, if you go to university, do something useful, do something, you know, that's uh, societally acceptable, will pay your way. So I did yeah. that, but as I did that, I snuck in to the art department and took lessons for free um, because they, they were thrilled to have someone who actually really wanted to do that <laughs> rather than all the students that were being pushed to do that. And um, I got a tutor, someone who taught me 
um, the way and showed me how to make a portfolio to get into art school. And that's how I, I got into my dream school right away you know, the next year. Oh my goodness, that is incredible. And what, what was your dream school? Where, where is your dream school? That was the Emily Carr Institute of Art and Design in Vancouver, in BC, in British Columbia, beautiful British Columbia on the West Coast. Wow. And the art school then, it's just moved this year, was on an island. So you had to get there with a little ferry or across the, the, the one and only bridge. And it was next, it's next to a huge marketplace with gorgeous fresh fruit and veggies. And it was surrounded by sailing boats and had beautiful views. So it was the most amazing place, very ins yeah. inspirational. And that's where you went to study fine art, yeah? Yes, yep. Fantastic. Yeah. So can you, for anyone listening, um, because some people have sometimes not a great idea of what fine art is out with. Mm -hmm. We know what art is. We, we, can see, we can see paintings and portraits. Yeah. But what is fine art? What, what makes fine art unique and different? I think... Um, for me personally, um, I got really interested in all the theories behind it, so I'll try not to, to talk too much about all that, but yeah, I think fine art in, in all its forms has been around for as long as we know it. If you look at the Greek muses, you know, there was a muse for writing poetry and there was a muse for writing um, words in other ways, there was a muse for drawing and for painting and you name it. And the reason was that that was a link between us as human beings and the gods. The muses brought the energy from the gods down to us humans to inspire us. And I think that's still true of our, to, to this day. In some way, shape or form, whether you know it or not, it touches us. And I know many people, because I've interviewed people, have stood in front of a, an amazing work of art and have just burst into tears yes. without realizing why. There's some energy carried in art that we have no idea of, but it can change lives. And it can change things for us socially as well. I think it's a very important social kind of aspect to um, us being together as human beings. Yeah, it is. And it's the most incredibly powerful tool, um, yeah. art in any form, actually. We were speaking mm -hmm. before about the, the fact that Sometimes art is still seen um, as something to be enjoyed by the upper class, um, which is extremely sad because it's not the case at all. Art should be, um, be able to be seen and enjoyed by anyone from anywhere, no matter you know, yeah. no matter how much money they've made or they haven't. Why mm -hmm. do you feel some sort of stigma attached to that? To art being a kind of more upper class if you like I don't really have a proper answer to that I could probably devise things and think up things yeah. um, but I think yeah. there was a shift between or the other aspects I just talked about Greek but it's also in our oldest societies artists were like shamans they were people that had a spe special power uh, wow. and they were taken care of you know they were the ones doing the, the drawings in the caves not because it was pretty but because it had energy it, it meant that the hunt was going to be successful or whatever and somewhere along the line that changed from that into something of beauty and uh, maybe it was in the middle middle ages i might be completely wrong where there was a shift but it did become something for the rich people you know to get their portraits done and um, to have a pretty picture on the wall and it, it would cost a lot of money. I think there was a shift even when it went into the churches and became something important in the churches um, to have these religious um, icons painted. So I think they're probably, maybe that has something to do with it, but it's a good question. I'll have to think about that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so tell me, what has been your most favorite piece to create? Oof. <laughs> wow. Um, I'd have to say that um, I was lucky enough to do my master's um, that ended last year. And I chose to do that not for the piece of paper, but because I wanted to be in a, in a situation where I was back at art school having freedom again to really let loose and really see what wanted to come out of me. And I was able to, re to play and to, to start burning images and i love that whole process of using a photographic image and having it not be a photograph anymore but turning and morphing into something else and started doing installation work so 
I think it's the thrill of doing something new that you've never done before um, and, and having a lovely outcome that I enjoyed. I enjoyed the process and I enjoyed, enjoyed the outcome. So okay. I think my master's show has probably been the topper for now. <laughs> So tell me as well about your masters. I know that you um, you had an accolade when it came to your results for your masters piece, which is quite phenomenal. Can you tell us a little bit about that, please, if that's okay? Um, I've, I, I well, I use it in some of my my talks to just not for myself, but to inspire other women and other people um, that if you really follow your dreams, I really went for it. I pushed. I pushed. Hi. <laughs> And um, I did really well. I didn't know I'd be able to after 25 years of being out of school. It was um, amazing. But I did get the award uh, distinction uh, with my master's. And I was lucky enough to get the award for, um, uh, what's it called, the academic award for all of the masters. So I did really well with that. Absolutely. So can you tell me, Patricia, what is next for you? What is your creations going to be next? I really want to continue with my art, um, but that goes hand in hand with me also taking my taking care of myself and um, in the sense of being financial, financially in a good position because being a, I don't want to be one of the poor starving artists and I don't think anyone needs to be that. I think that's kind of an old structure that people have decided upon. Yeah. Um, and so that's something I want to work with, not just for myself, but also with other women. And hopefully I'll be able to work with other artists uh, very soon as well uh, and teaching them another way um, and having communities that talk about these things. Absolutely. And you have got your own community on Facebook as well, which you are about to put live, which is really exciting. Yes. What is it called? It is. It's called Fiercely Authentic. Love it. And I put the word badasses underneath it just for fun, <laughs> but it's, it's fiercely authentic. And it's a group for women at this point in time. I might mix that up at some other point in time, but um, very, uh, I, I love working with women. So Wonderful. And, of course, I want to speak a little bit about your photography work when it comes to you. You do a lot of different photography, and you get to travel the world um, doing that too. But I'd love to talk about the niche of boudoir photography, which is – what you are also doing at the moment, so exciting. Yes, um, it is. Tell me about boudoir, because it can be, again, like we've said, um, a little bit, well, people just don't really understand what boudoir photography is, right down at the deep of the root, you know? What, what, yeah, I, yeah. From, for example. It's been a long, uh, around for a lot longer than what I even thought. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the history of boudoir and why you decided yeah. to just I went to a show actually here. Yeah. It just was in Amsterdam. So I'll share this with you because I just I love it. <laughs> this oh, is a show wow. that's on in Amsterdam right now. <laughs> well, how you can cool. see it. Is that, did you see um, one there just now? It's a show. It's an exhibit that's on in Amsterdam. I was just there quickly. Um, I, I think uh, the women's body has been um, around and has been used in 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 its art form and in its power since the day. Of, you know, the goddess and uh, the Venus of Willendorf is the oldest statue of a female body. And it's been, of course, women muses have been around in all the times of all the great painters. And uh, equally, as soon as photography came into being, women were photographed um, bare naked or almost naked. Yeah. And it was, it's not, has nothing to do with sexuality. Perhaps in some cases it did um or sensuality but just as a, a celebration of the female body and the beauty of it it's interesting that it's be it's become again quite popular in america and, and in a few other countries <laughs> hello there Look, no distraction at all <laughs> well, Vida, Vida, a mother or mom one mom what are they call mompreneurs or something they say um, yes. Is sometimes cooking, but we get by. So yeah, I would say, um, what 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 made you decide that you wanted to experiment a little bit with that niche? I've been I I use the female form in my work um, quite a bit, and after I did my masters, I started playing just for the sake of playing, and I started 
creating, um, I started taking pictures up in the north of Scotland, beautiful, beautiful area where some of the oldest rock on earth is. And I started thinking about this and combining it with bodies that are floating through space into the rocks and this kind of thing. And I thought, I really need to start photographing women again. Um, the, the body is such a beautiful thing. But next to that, I started to research and uh, came across boudoir in America, where right now it's incredibly how it's incredibly popular, not just because of the outcome, but because there's a whole movement of empowering women through photography and through boudoir, and that really interests me. Yes. Um, so it's really about giving yourself the space again. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to think about, actually. I was going to ask you, um, what could someone experience if they were to have a boudoir photography shoot? <laughs> yeah. So... So there are other photographers out here, but what I found um, looking around is, uh, first of all, a lot of it is shot for the boyfriend, and um, I found some of the pictures to be quite tacky and awful with red bed sheets and purple underwear and this kind of thing. That's not what we're after at all. Um, I'm looking, I'm looking to um, reawaken and ignite the authentic woman within and bring her out to play. And that can, you don't even have to get naked for it, basically. You could wear just a lovely, sexy dress and show a knee. That's fine for me. But it's about the whole process. So I work with a woman um, before the shoot even begins. We talk about what both of our um, wants are, what she would like to get out of it. We're very clear about uh, what, what a woman likes and dislikes about herself. So we're already starting to prep and... Um, work towards this amazing experience where we have a whole team it's really fun we have fun we've got music blasting and um they they get a little bit of preparation with hair and makeup and of course their outfits are picked up yes it's a real empowering day it's not just about the kind of shoot itself getting over and done with it's an absolute process it's a whole process yes yeah and how do you think being a fine artist as well um, I mean, that's just such a unique thing to be a fine artist and to also do photography. Do you feel as if it gives you um, an even bigger edge when it comes to your um, photos that you end up producing? Of course, I'd like to think so. <laughs> There's, there, are, there, are, there are a few photographers out there that call themselves art, artists. Um, I think I've just been doing it for so long that I want I want the photograph to be something really specific and really special, which is something I'll speak to the women about beforehand as well. How far can we go in that fine art? What is their um, dream shoot? Perhaps it is something that is a complete fantasy thing. Um, and yes, I, I want them to be my muse and I want them to be a work of art in the end of it, something that they'd be really proud of and that will remind them of that, you know, this incredibly empowering experience. Wonderful. Yeah. And I know that, Patricia, you have set up something really exciting, which is um, a portrait party. It's just <laughs> yes. absolutely yeah. awesome. And I am so excited I get to be part of one of these. Yeah. Tell me about awesome. the party. And again, what gave you the um, kind of idea and um, what was the thought behind wanting to do that too because it sounds incredible thank you i'm so i'm so chuffed you're going to be my first hostess so um really really excited about that i can't wait actually it seems way too far away um the, the thing with the boudoir and with my other shoots is that they can be a bit on the pricey side for people because I do I do it as a fine artist and um, that's just the way it is. Even though I keep my prices very, very, very reasonable on the front end, um, the shoot itself is quite quite doable and, and I'm really easy with people and you know, I'm happy to do uh, part payments or whatever. But for, for all my student friends and my artists, it's still a bit much. So... I was thinking of a way, um, how can I offer my photography so that it, everyone is accessible to everyone? And this is like a little mini shoot, uh, but it also has the social aspect to it, which I love. So it's a bunch of women getting together and having fun and having this experience together. So that was kind of the idea behind it, to make it accessible for everyone. Amazing. And it's all female entrepreneurs, isn't it? All business owners. Yes. Who are branding themselves in a much more professional way. And you get to exactly. that, which is so amazing. Some women at the beginning of the journeys, some who are just 
about to take off. It's so exciting exactly. to think that you actually get the opportunity to photograph them before um, the, the kickoff of this journey for some of them. It's just, it's exciting, isn't it? It's really exciting. I'm, so, I'm really looking forward to meeting everyone. Yeah. Oh, Oh, excellent. So one last question, if I may. What does the next two years look like? What would you what would you want to achieve within the next two years? What's your mission? <laughs> um, I would love to make a difference in the world. And I'm not sure I can explain exactly how right now. Um, I have one thing we haven't talked about is that I also have a spiritual background and I really I really feel like I'm here to 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 bring some change in some way, shape, or form. Maybe the photographer the photography is a beginning combined with my fine arts. Um but I think as we go along that becomes clearer. Um, you know. I'm always thinking there's there's an energy that I'm following and I'm such a you know you know my um uh, my design, it's about following my response and sometimes you only see, see as far as the headlights go and not where you're actually driving, you know, you can only see the first couple of steps. Um, I want to continue with my art, I'd love to push through with that, um, I'd love it to be something meaningful, really, and to set up these communities um, with women and possibly help artists as well, just to get to the next step. Um, all of that combined, I think, is what I'd like to see happening in the next two years. Not sure if that's a perfect answer, but... <laughs> it is perfect. It's your answer. Well, I would like to, um, if it's okay with you, nominate you for a Stardust Award, Patricia, for your work as a female oh entrepreneur who is working hard to make the fine art industry, the art industry as a whole, and photography um, such an mm -hmm. exciting to be. No, not at all. You've completely inspired me when it comes to your work. Before I met you, Patricia, yes, I had um, a huge interest in, in art, but more um, of the things that I love, like dance and drama and singing and things like that. <laughs> to you, I've really delved into what art can be. Um, and it's, it's like a different realm altogether sometimes. Some of the work that I've seen, I just cannot believe that someone could produce such incredible stuff. And that goes for you included. I've seen your work and it's, it's incredible. Um, like nothing Thank I've seen before. And it's extremely inspiring. And I hope um, that you, and well, I believe that you will, get to do what you want to do within the next few years, which is also inspire, you know, the younger generation coming up to have... Um, have the career that they want to within any kind of art that they want to do and and not be put off possibly by family telling them that the nine to five job is always the way to go because we know that it's not always yep. and sometimes creating and designing your own dream um although it can be slightly harder work is is the way to go um so yeah follow your bliss yeah so follow your bliss, absolutely so we will put your page <laughs> on um, underneath the links as well Patricia so people can have a little look at oh, thank you so much. it's coming up um, and just to let everyone know that the incredible uh, global Stardust Awards is on the 18th and 19th of November in London um, and you will get to meet uh, your nominees on the red carpet which is really oh, cool. wow. Yeah, and then have a chat with them and get to know what they're up to um, so we would love you all to be there for anyone watching and listening in and um, thank you so much again for, for our listeners being here today. So good morning, good afternoon. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Patricia, would you like to say goodbye to everyone? Thank you so much. And Jen, you're just amazing. And the group of women you have around you are just amazing. I'm loving this community more than anything in ages. It's just so <laughs> empowering to be with you. Thank you so much for everything you do. Thanks all you watchers. It's been amazing having a little chat. <laughs> I'm so chuffed. To know you as well. Okay, guys, this has been The Unstoppable Show. My name is Jennifer Hardy, and I hope you took even just a smidgen of, of inspiration from, um, from Patricia today. And thank you again. Have the most incredible day or evening. Lots of love. Bye. Bye.